Hey guys, it's Dan here, Dan Taylor. Hope you're all well. And uh, we've had a couple of questions in the group uh, regarding commercial property. And what I thought I would do is uh, start some beach sessions, um, some beach club sessions on certain questions that come into the group. And the first one today is uh, regarding, you know, why is in commercial property, why does it create more time and more money? You know, more importantly, why there are a lot of questions around the more money. Why do you make a hell of a lot more money in commercial property? Uh, why are the margins so bigger, so larger? And why are the margins in, say, for example, residential, HMOs, service accommodations, why are they so, so much smaller? And uh, so that's the question we're going to jump into today. We're going to jump onto the uh, chalkboard uh, and sketch that out and see what that looks like and why that is the case. But. Um, if you want to further uh, look at this into commercial, then we're doing a free workshop. Well, I'll put a link in below and uh, it'll be a 45 minute workshop uh, with perhaps some Q&A at the end. Uh, and so if you, if you want to take a deeper dive into some cool creative commercial property strategies, not only my deals, but some clients deals, which I'm really excited about. Uh, they've done some amazing deals and we get to work with some you know, really cool people. Link will be below so that for a 45 minute workshop. But anyway, in the meantime, let's dive into, so why does commercial make more money and more time as opposed to all the other asset classes? Hello and welcome back. It's Dan Taylor here again. I uh, hope you're well. Just come back from the beach and thought we would sketch up. Remember we are talking about commercial, why are the margins so much bigger? Why do you make more money in commercial than residential? And there are a number of reasons for that. And uh, let's just sketch it out now, just so you've got an insight into why that may be the case. Uh, I'm very much an advocate for commercial. It's, uh, it's, it's been absolutely fantastic for me. It's been amazing for some of the clients uh, that have completed deals recently. And we'll maybe allude to that at the end of uh, this very quick session. So let's jump right in. And um, so why, why does commercial make more money? Well, let's look at these costs that we have down here on the left-hand side on the cost section. Um, and let's just sketch this out. So agents' fees. What would an agent cost a residential landlord? Well, if you have a huge portfolio, you know, I've got friends, clients who have 60, 70, 80, or in fact, you know, nearly 20 million pound of residential. And I've got friends who have one or two residentials. So the, the variance is massive. But if you've got a big estate, you might get you know six percent plus five, seven point two. Um, but really, you're talking about on average ten percent gross, uh, which is you know including VAT. So I would imagine you know a sensible figure to put down there. You know most people get charged ten percent plus VAT, which is twelve percent. But most of us can really negotiate that back down to a kind of gross all-in figure of ten percent. Now in commercial, um, you can actually charge the tenants to manage. The property, which is quite incredible, bit of a bit of a contrarian, uh, you know, disruptive thought to be honest. Where if you're used to getting charged ten uh, percent, and you can actually charge them, so in commercial, it's either zero or it's minus. Um, it can be anything from ten to fifteen percent. Yeah. So imagine being able to charge fifteen percent plus fat, eighteen percent, or you know, getting charged ten percent. You know, that is, let's just put a column in here in terms of a, a variance. Uh, and V is for variance, and so that's a kind of 25% or 28% swing actually with the VAT on top of the 15%. So massive, massive difference uh, for commercial. You're up 28%, which is incredible. Now in terms of boilers, repairs, and maintenance, I really like to put this all together into one section because it all comes in either um, reactive repairs, you know, tenant leaves, you have to repaint or do certain things, take the carpet out, perhaps clean the carpet, get a professional cleaning company in, um, and then preventative maintenance, where you're maintaining things before they actually uh, run out of their useful life. And all in all, uh, this cost is in the region of um, 15% for residential. Now in commercial, would you believe it's actually zero again? You know, zero cost for all repairs, all maintenance in commercial. And the reason for that is something that's incredible called an FRI. And an FRI is an FRI lease, which means simply full repairing and insuring. Yep, now a full repairing and insuring lease means that the tenant pays for 
you know, just about everything. Now, if you have a larger property, um, you know, some some of my properties are creative shops uh, where you may have communal areas. So, for example, uh, if the roof is, is over a multiple number of units, then you know that is the kind of thing where the landlord takes care of that and then recharges it back to the tenant. So you may, over and above, whatever the tenants spend, have communal charges, you know, like flushing the, the gutters and the downpipes twice a year, uh, putting uh, salt uh, in communal areas, pavements and the like, uh, should it get below four degrees. So these things are managed by the managing agent if you want to outsource it, which is what I do, because I value my time more than the extra profit. Um, so my managing agent projects forward what he's going to spend in a year, and then he divvies that up based on how many square foot each tenant has, and he charges that three months in advance. So before he spends the money, he obviously wants the money in, the float in, to then spend that money. But he projects it forward a year in advance. So again, you know, what the difference is there, um, it's absolutely huge. I can't even put a figure on that. It's, uh, it's colossal. In commercial, um, as long as you structured your leases correctly, um, you know, roof repair is a massive thing. You know, you, you don't do them very often, but in, uh, in commercial, you know, you can actually have the tenants on very specific uh, situations pay for a new roof for you at the end of the lease. Uh, insurance is the same kind of thing, where in insurance you might spend, you know, you potentially might spend 500 pounds a year or more insuring a residential property. In, um, in commercial, it doesn't cost you anything. Now, why is that? It's because of this, it's because of the FRA lease. Again, uh, this FRA lease is almost like a bulletproof vest. It's like a tax shield against, or a cost shield against all the costs out there. It's fantastic. Um, as long as you have it drafted correctly, and there's an art to that as well. Now, in terms of refurbs, you know, what is a refurb by refurb mortgage on a residential? Is that, you know, maybe three to 10K in that region? You know, it's got to be around those kind of things. If it's an HMO and you want to convert a three bed into a six bed, you know, you might be up at 40 to 60 K. But you know, let's be sensible and just talk about residential. Um, that's three to 10 K. Now, in commercial, it's zero again, but it's better than zero, significantly better than zero. <laughs> you won't believe what I'm just about to tell you, but it's, a God's own, it's the God's honest truth. I have one property that cost me 1.25 million, which is a fair chunk. It's probably not anybody's first deal, um, but the tenants collectively spent, now it costs 1.25 million, 13,000 square foot. It's quite a chunk, there's five tenants in there, uh, but the tenants spent 2.3 million. So can you imagine that? The tenants spending 2.3 million on the property, completely gutting the thing out, putting new elevations, new toilets, new infrastructure, new air conditioning, everything into this property. Um, they spent 2.3 million, uh, all national tenants, and uh, it cost me 1.25. Now, that's not a bad deal, is it? When you can get your tenants, all of a sudden, instead of being a pain, they become a profit center, yeah? So all in all here, you're probably looking at, you know, 25% or so uh, of your income in residential uh, is gonna be taken you know, by all these costs. In commercial, you're looking at potentially you know, zero to 20%. Plus though, it's a plus. It's not a negative, it's on top of your rent. So if you wanna manage, even if you wanna manage and then outsource the management, you can still charge your tenants 15, 10 to 15%, depending on what it says in the lease, on top of the rent you actually achieve. So you don't even need to manage it and you can still charge this management fee. That alone is a, an amazing reason why you should be looking at commercial. Now on top of that, um, in terms of insurance, here um, in commercial, you can actually charge the tenants a surcharge for the hassle and time and effort it takes to you know, secure the best kind of insurance for your property, because you want the best, you want it bulletproof, it does not cost you a penny. So you really want to get the best broker, the best company um, insuring. And that, you can then put a percentage on top of that cost and charge it back. So that's why I'm saying conservatively, 15% for the management fee, um, and you can charge more for the insurance as well. Yeah, 
All in all, I think you'll agree that it's a, a quite compelling um, story or picture that's being drawn here. Uh, and it all comes down to, you know, this one thing in commercial. This is what I, well, I, lo I love a lot of things about commercial, but this video is about, you know, why, why are the margin bigger? Why do you make more money uh, in commercial? And, you know, in a nutshell, um, the gross equals the net. Now, that for me, you know, simply is absolutely and utterly fantastic. You know, if you get your head around that, that the gross equals the net uh, in commercial property, then, you know, you, I'm sure there's a compelling reason to love commercial, like I do. I mean, I absolutely love it. There's nothing like it. Residential is so linear and it's under attack by the politicians where commercial is multidimensional. You can do so many things in commercial. Now, in residential as well, you have Section 24. You have, you're under attack by the government, by politicians, because of their greed for votes. So they're selling the residential landlords down the river, unfortunately. I still love resident asset class, but you're swimming against the tide right now. You're under attack. The politicians want the votes for the next election. They're building up to that. So they're transferring power from the landlord to the tenant as we speak. And after doing section 24, you must realize by now there is nothing, I mean, absolutely nothing off the table that they won't do to win these votes. Now, there are 3 million you know, investors in residential and there's about 100,000 in commercial. So the air is thin there. You know, there's no votes there. You know, so that's why they're targeting residential, the low hanging fruit for the politicians to win votes. So if you want to swim up river like the salmon, cool. But if you want to surf and go with the go with the flow, go with the tide, go with the wave, then commercial is something you really want to be looking at. Because not only is it's significantly more money, but it's also gives you the, the, the single most and a scarcest resource on the planet back which is your time. It really does. And that is because of this one single thing called an FRI lease. When you have one of these, um, it really transfers all the hassle, all the onerous issues back to the tenant, and then you have your professional management police to police that. Now, that's obviously not all commercials good. You know, we've, we've witnessed numerous CVAs in the high street, the high street's in demise, but there's certain specific niche commercial property plays that you can do are very much protected or hedged against the big cat, as I call it. The cat being, you know, the next correction, which is on its way, the Amazon of things and the technology. And technology, as we know, has really much changed, you know, it's changed what we do as, as people, as humans. It's changed our spending patterns and it will continue to do so. So don't buy just any commercial. Learn first. Know what you're doing, and learn about how you you know how you create commercial as a hedge against all these macroeconomic things happening in the marketplace right now. Um, but the time there's no better time right now uh, to get into commercial um, because of all the uncertainty, all the fear in the market. Prices have never been better, and with uh, baby boomers, the first of them in uh, 2016 turned 70. By 2020, uh, by 2025. Half of them, half the baby boomers will be uh, 70 and they're the ones that have been asset acquirers all their life and they're going to be starting to spoil. Well, they are starting already in America, 10,000 a day are retiring. So they're asset disposers, they're sellers. So if you imagine all these assets coming onto the market, price will hopefully come down uh, and there's going to be competition in terms of um, them trying to sell their assets to create capital. Um, so it's a phenomenal time, and I see the biggest wealth transfer since the 1930s is just in front of us. So you need to, if you're wanting to create passive income from an asset class, and you decide property is your asset class, then please do yourself a favor, a massive favor, and look at commercial. So, and how do you look at commercial? Well, we have a free live workshop um, where we're gonna show you six case studies. Um, of private clients and what recently they've done. These private clients have completed deals um, and we're gonna show you three private clients deals and three of my deals. Uh, two are gonna be no money down. Can you believe it? Commercial property and no money down. Um, doesn't, you know, sounds contrarian and disruptive, but we're gonna show you two deals that are no money down. We're gonna show you one deal that's a 10X. 
So we 10 times the value of the property, but with, and it was a development, but it was a development without the risk. We're gonna show you how we increased a pension fund's income by 500%. That's another deal, and it's a private client's deal that's just completed literally three or four weeks ago. And we're gonna show you another deal of how you can uh, potentially create financial freedom or complete time freedom in only one deal. It's probably not your first deal, to be honest, but it just shows you what's possible. And let's have some fun. And we'll uncover some really cool creative commercial property strategies, and we'll give you some real cool insights and real deals that are happening right now. Thank you for watching the video. And hopefully you got some content out of that and you thought it was quite interesting. If you want to see more content, then don't forget, subscribe below, ring the bell, and you'll be notified about more uh, videos coming up on our YouTube channel, all related to commercial property.